We were living in Mozambique when I hurt my back. And as part of the treatment to, for this, I had to go to a chiropractor down in South Africa. This involved a plane flight down to the capital city, Maputo, and then uh, taxis and buses and everything to get to the border, and then more taxis to get to Nelsprite, the town where I would stay. Well, I had made several of these trips, and my back was getting better, and I decided I'm going to go to Swaziland, which reminds me I need that sheet. Oh, sure. Okay, I'm going to go to Swaziland, and this is kind of what it looks like. It's an island in the middle of South Africa, and the capital city, Mbani, is right here. And I had a nice visit, and it was time to go home. So let me say also, during my visit, people spoke English to me at, at the places that I was, and it wasn't an issue. But when I went to the bus station, hardly anybody did. And finally, this one man said, when I said, I'm, I need to go to Nelsprite, and he says, oh, this bus. Okay, so I went over there to the driver. No Sprite? Yeah, yeah, get on. So I got on the bus. I'm riding for like three or four hours and thinking, okay, um, maybe something's wrong here because I should have been there by now. And so I, but I just, I checked in with my spirit guides and it's like, yeah, you're okay, don't worry. So I ride on. Well, it's getting to be late afternoon and we're stopped at this small town and I think, ah, I should get off. There's a possibility of a hotel here. And my guides just said, no, no, you're fine. Just sit there and, and keep going. It's okay. So I did that. And then it was dark and the bus stopped and everybody else got off. And the driver comes over to me and he says, go. <laughs> it's like, where do I go? And he points over to a street light under which there are two groups of men standing. And, I'm, and he says, hike. I said, well, what if a ride doesn't come? Where do I go then? And he said, oh, there's a, oops, there's a uh, hospital. You can stay at the hospital. And I said, well, where is it? And he points off into the dark. And, and this is a village with thatched hut roofs. There's no hotel. There, maybe there's a hospital, which is actually a clinic and I could maybe stay there. Anyway, I went out to join the men under the street light. There was one group of hot young studs who were just there and ready, and then there was a group of old men, and I certainly went to those old men and stood with them. <laughs> you guys can protect me, right? And these, these hot young guys were eyeing my backpack, and you know, just, it was a scary situation. So we're waiting, a, a car comes and a bunch of guys run to the car. Nell Sprite? No. So the car goes on. And then about 20 minutes later, a pickup truck comes. And so all of us rush to the truck and I say, Nell Sprite? And he says, yeah. And he has me get in the back of the truck. This was a fun kind of thing in one way because here's all these, these black people in the front and me, white girl, <laughs> in the back. <laughs> and another guy was in the back too. So anyway, we, we drove for about a half an hour or so, and they let out the other guy, and the man got out, and we got to talking a little bit, and it was him and his wife and his wife's sister. And they were aid workers, and they had been working on a project a couple of hours south of where we were. And they said, you know, we, I would have been home, because usually we end the project in the middle of the afternoon, but uh, this was, we got delayed for about four hours, just enough time to come and pick me up. And he said also that, you know, when you came to the car, that old man who came there, but got there before you, he said, I don't care where you're going, you take this girl with you. <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, they grabbed themselves another beer out of the half, half full case. And um, we all got back in and we drove and in every half hour or so they'd get out to pee and get another beer. <laughs> anyway, we finally made it back to Nelsprite. And they wouldn't go down into my neighborhood because these are black folks in South Africa. And, and so they let me off at a corner and I had a 10 minute walk back to the hostel where I was staying and it, it all worked out well. And I'm telling this story today to remind myself and my, to remind myself that my spirit guides, they're working for me and they are, they're actively taking care of me. And sometimes I really need that remembering. And um, 
Yeah, and, and you know, during that whole trip, I was very calm. I wasn't scared. I was just like, okay, yeah, this is the way it is. Now telling you this story, I am shaking my boots. <laughs>